Hi everyone, this is Arcadius and welcome back to Naval Creed. Today we will be reviewing the pinnacle of the Soviet dreadnought battleship line, that being, um, well, in real game in Germanland, or as I have renamed her, Ekaterina and her sister ship, Rodina. Uh, this ship is one of the most fun tier 10 battleships you can ever play, mainly because of her firepower, um, and that's pretty much it. Everything else is going to have the same kind of theme for the Dreadnought Battleship line. Uh, terrible secondaries, terrible AA, terrible armor, good speed, but not the best. Um, but her firepower is unmatched at this tier. So, let's take a look to see what we have. Uh, first though, you can kind of see the sister ship. It kind of has like a pirate ship feel to it. Uh, this just came out, I think it was last update. So this is still relatively new, but it's not terrible, but not anything that I would say fits for the ship, but who knows. Alright, so let's see what we have. We have 91,200 health, which seems pretty low. I have still not compared the stats of all of these ships yet, since they're still being somewhat tweaked on, since they're still new. Uh, so things might still change. 32% uh, torpedo damage resistance, not as good as Yama at 50%, but 32% is still nothing to bat an eye at. Uh, maximum armor of 450 millimeters, a belt of 300, so we now have about 12 inches on the belt versus 11 for Rostislav. And it looks like we have the most on the turret faces, not the sides though. It does look like the rest of the turret is pretty squishy, maybe. Uh, so it might be easier to take out these turrets than any other turrets in the entire Dreadnought line. Um, but yeah, definitely don't give broadside. You still have a pretty large citadel area, and it is above water. So you can be citadel and one shot if you have enough shells connect in that area. Guns. We have four quadruple 16-inch guns. I never thought I'd actually ever say that, but here we are. So you have one aft, two amidships surrounding the second funnel, and well, and then one rear too. It looks like there's no actual secondary tower. You just have the main tower, a smokestack, and then another smokestack with a pole mast. Um, so whichever direction you aim, whether it's this way, this way, this way, or this way, you will have at least two turrets that will be able to swing freely without having to turn 180 degrees. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty powerful. You have pretty much an H-39 on each end of your ship, minus the secondaries and armor and everything and torpedoes. Um, but gunpower, this ship has a ton of firepower. 1.85 rounds per minute, so... Maybe not the fastest, but I, like I've said in my earlier video for Rostislav, I don't really notice the rate of fire. Uh, it might on paper be slow, but in game, the amount of shells you're dishing out kind of equals out that. And if you stagger your turret so you only fire two one time and then two another, that'll definitely make it seem like you're just showing, you're shooting an eyewall pretty much every maybe 10 or 15 seconds. Um, so that's extremely powerful. 180 degree turn time is 40 seconds. 34.3% HE fire chance, just like Rostislav. And really, really good guns. Um, I don't know if they're all the same, but they seem to be the same 16-inch guns all the way starting at Sinop. Um, actually, we can check that out. So if that is true, then if you have enough experience with Synop, you know how these guns work. So let's take a look. Yeah, they're exactly the same guns. Uh, the rate of fire does change the higher you go, um, but the guns themselves, the shell velocity, and the damages are all going to be the same. So yeah, you just get a lot more guns the higher up you go. Um, what else do we have? Main gun range of 23 kilometers, secondary range of 5 kilometers, no turret secondaries, only casemates, uh, which means you have a huge shell trap for any incoming shell, and you have the same number as uh, Rostislav, actually, with 12 per side. 
Uh, again, pretty much worthless against anything that's not a destroyer. And if you have a destroyer that's within five kilometers, there's definitely something wrong. Uh, so, yeah, secondary is pretty much not going to be effective at all. A defense. Somewhat okay middle damage, just across the slav, but again, it's only 2.5 kilometers. Uh, definitely would not recommend a full AA build for any of these ships in this entire line. Um, yeah, she's just a really thick ship. I mean, dive bombers are going to have a field day with the ship, as you can clearly, clearly see. Uh, I haven't had much air attack, honestly, but I can definitely see it not working out too well for anyone who plays this ship. Your speed is 28.5 knots, so actually pretty decent. You're faster than a Montana, which only goes 28. Uh, faster than a Super Yama, which goes 27. Um, you're not going to catch a K2. A Centurion or L3 is something like 28 knots as well. Uh, so they're all pretty much the same speed as you, except like the French and... Um, German battleships, which can actually do over 30 knots. But, yeah, this ship is really, really powerful, so you can kind of stay at range and just spam either high explosive or armor piercing. And whether or not you use high explosive or armor piercing doesn't really matter, because if you're getting hit with 16, 16 inch shells, it's gonna hurt, no matter what kind of ship you're in. Uh, some armaments are better for others, so for example destroyers, you can just absolutely destroy them with high explosive. Cruisers, armor piercing can work if you have the broadsides. I don't think you can punch through the nose of most cruisers. Um, the overmatch mechanics in this game are kind of trash, honestly. Um, but if you use high explosive, that's at least a third of the ship destroyed, uh, maybe even half. Battleships, high explosive for the superstructure, armor piercing for the, well, broadside and the main hull. And then for carriers, it uh, really depends. I would recommend armor piercing for British carriers, and then high explosive for American and Japanese carriers. Um, but if you run into a carrier, try and stay with other teammates that can help you, because you have absolutely no way... Of defending yourself you might get a couple planes but that's literally it maybe two or three and that's not going to save you at all so with it let's toss it into a game and see what we can do all right here ourselves a game uh we actually do have a carrier we have a curve for us a yama a monarch garodina a bismarck a warster and a nakazuki so a very heavy battleship game with a well, not too impressive cruiser or destroyer, and a carrier that is actually really, really powerful, but really, really squishy, if you know how to shoot her. Alright, so let's start moving on. I do have health buffs and spew buffs applied, so do keep that in mind. And let's see here. Uh, Rodina or Katarina. Honestly, armor piercing a broadside would be the best because you have little to zero superstructure to actually high explosive spam you can still set fires on the ship but to actually do high explosive spam i would think most of it would just shatter her first armor piercing high explosive doesn't matter it's going to take damage but it will take a long time monarch just burn it just the only way to destroy that ship is to burn it honestly uh yama armor piercing obviously and bismarck kind of both uh, we ran into a Bismarck with our Ostislav video, and we could see that armor piercing and high explosive worked pretty decently uh, when shooting that ship. So not too worried about it. The everything else is just high explosive. So Shinano, Worcester, and Akazuki. Though Shinano actually might need some armor piercing because its armor is kind of finicky. Uh, sometimes it'll just shatter your high explosive. Other times it'll be citadel by it. So. Who knows? Alright, so gun angle to use all turrets is something like this, which is actually really, really good. Um, I always say that you might be able to get some pens through the nose, which you still might hear, but maybe not to the extent of other ships. So your angles for your main guns is really, really powerful and really good. 
All right, so we see the curry worst. Let's see what we can do with. Oh, we have armor piercing loaded. Right, I'm gonna switch. Actually, no, let's stay with armor piercing. If we're gonna have a broadside of a Yama, and even the Curfresh for a little bit, then definitely want to take this advantage. And we sit it down for 37,000 damage. Don't see that too often. Although German battleships are best citadel at range. That's why they like to get close. Alright, so we have the enemy, Rodina, there. Let's see what we can do against her. As you can see, your rate of fire may, on paper, be slow. But I have no problem with that at all. And three citadels right off the bat. So, yeah, the 12 inches of belt armor you have will not save you. Uh, though this is pretty much just plunging fire instead of actually coming in on the belt itself. So it's going through the upper deck, or yeah, the deck armor and the upper level. But all is fair, and that's two more citadels for almost 50,000 damage. She has less than 2,000 health left. And I think I can, oh, she's actually shooting at me now. And we're going to only use one turret there, and use the rest of the three on the Yama. There she goes. And Yama with 22,000 damage, but no Citadel. So you can see how the damage output of the ship is going to be completely unparalleled by pretty much anything. I think maybe Super Yamada may be able to give similar damage numbers, but on paper, this ship has the money. Now your accuracy is kind of questionable, though, it looks like. I'm still not able to Citadel this Yama, which is actually very surprising. Now let's see if we can use one last salvo on her broadside here. Maybe if we get enough citadels we can finish her off. This is the most resilient Yamato I've ever seen. There we go, two citadels. That's what I was looking for. And then I'm definitely not going to citadel Kerr first at this angle. But I can still do a ton of armor piercing damage. Though she is kind of angling in. So I'm going to switch over to high explosive at this point. Still 11,500 damage with only 3 pens, though. Alright, and we're going to have enough time to shoot one salvo of high explosive. Maybe. Alright, yep. Yeah. And then the island's going to get in the way. So she has 63,000 health. Well, not too much damage, but we did take out a few secondaries and set a fire. The Shinano is almost in range, honestly. And we have the Bismarck over here. Might as well just send a few shells down range. Maybe we'll get lucky. With the shell velocity of 757, you don't have the faster shells. But it's definitely still not hard to hit targets at range. Give it enough practice. And we set another fire. Okay, so the Shinano is in range. Looks like it's behind an island, backing up. So she won't be too fast, so maybe we can shoot her over the island. And she's the only ship left now. Might as well pop a heal. Let's see, what's she doing? Well, now she's moving forward. So let's see what she's doing now. That should give us some hits. Five pens and one shatter. Let's switch over to armor piercing just to see what that does. Oh, 
And let's see. So we're getting the mid chips now. So it's half and half for the armor pierce or high explosive. We had five pens and four shatters. But let's see what armor piercing can do. So she did not get a flooding from those two torpedo strikes because if she did, she would have put out the fires as well when she repaired. So she's still going to get some fire damage, but armor piercing should finish off with five pens. And there we go. So the damage you can deal with the ship is unimaginable. Um, so let's see how we actually did. We had a lot of citadels. 281,000 damage. Not as much as I expected, honestly. Um, three ships sunk, 120 shell hits, 8 citadels, 2 fires, 5,200 base XP. We had 30,000 damage in high explosive and 249,000 damage just in armor piercing alone. Fires did less than 1,200 damage and no secondary battery hits at all. So, yeah... These guns are very, very powerful. These ships are very, very powerful. Uh, so Rostislav and Ekaterina are honestly two of my most favorite battleships to play. I just don't play them that often because I'm trying to grind uh, free XP. And these don't exactly help with that very much. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend at least grinding through to Rostislav. Um, and if you find that you still don't like this line then don't bother going to a Katarina because it's just the same thing um yeah so final review over the dreadnought battleship line Ganga is going to be extremely powerful and can crush pretty much anything and she actually has pretty deep full exception for this entire battleship line Imperatrista Maria is just a copy paste except you take this turret and turn it 180 degree tur around but still not a bad ship. Uh, slightly more balanced, and yeah, you start seeing some st strong carriers, so you'll start have to worry about that. Uh, Ismail, a really fun ship, just don't give broadside. Remember, you're pretty much just a Fuso with New Mexico guns, so if you know how the armor is on Fuso, you should know not to give broadside. Sinop, the fastest platform that has 16-inch uh, guns at this tier that being said though you are a very very thick and juicy targets in terms of hull space and freeboard and you will immediately regret any kind of decision that gets you close to the enemy where you can't maneuver away from um but the guns are good uh navarino one of the weirdest and i hesitate to say ugliest battleships designs i will never be a fan of the ship Oh, there's just so much better ships at this tier that can do so much better. That being said, your guns are good at range, and you have the possibility of being a very good sniper battleship. Rostislav, the power of a Montana at a tier 9. Um, everything else about the ship is trash except your speed, which is mediocre at best. But your guns do not disappoint, nor will they ever disappoint. And then Ekaterina as the finale. You take overpowered guns to, well, maybe not overpowered guns, but a broadside to the max with 16, 16 inch quad guns. And it's just, you just see something and you smack it. And whether or not you have high explosive or armor piercing loaded, it's gonna hurt. And within a few salvos, that ship will be sunk. As you can clearly see on the enemy Katarina and even the Yamato itself. Um, yeah, don't expect miracles from the ship. Obviously, if you're under attack from carriers, it will not take very long for you to suffer. Um, battleships, if you get broadside, you're just going to regret that and go back to port very quickly. On torpedoes, you are pretty maneuverable, I would say. Um, but maybe not the best either. So something like Ismail and Ekaterina come to mind that are not very maneuverable. But Navarino and Ganga are pretty decent. Uh, Speed-wise, you're not the fastest, you're not the slowest. 
The secondaries, mm, they're there, but they're not going to do much. And then, yeah, that's about it. Uh, Armor-wise, I don't really have any complaints. Pretty straightforward, just don't give broadside, but that's a good thumb of rule for any kind of battleship. Uh, all in all, this battleship line does have its rough points, but I am pretty decently um, satisfied with it. it. I do like the point where it feels like a grind in the middle and the beginning, but in the end for the tier 9 and tier 10, it does feel like it pays off. Not many um, tech tree lines have that feeling. Sometimes it's just a copy-paste, copy-paste, copy-paste. Uh, this time it feels like, okay, now we actually do have a lot better ships that we can use. With that, I will wrap up today's video. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe. We're not going to start going over the next line of Russian battleships yet because they are not completely out. All we can do is... Well, right now, play Poltava. Um, and then we can look at Lenin. But we're not going to do any kind of review on them, obviously. And then, for the Japanese battleships, we can play Hiraga. But since we don't have Shinomi, or the Tier 10, I'm not going to review her either until the other one is out. And then we can go from there. And that leaves us with going over Ramen, which is newly acquired to my fleet. I only have about one game in her. Uh, it's a British carrier with American aircraft. Pretty straightforward, honestly. There doesn't really need to be a review about it. But we can still do her, and we'll be going over her tomorrow. And then after that, since I don't know what the update for this week will be, and we will start going over the world missions, going from Villa La Vera all the way to the Battle of Midway. And we will be showing you what these missions are, and hopefully we'll be able to win them all. Uh, I have a feeling that I will not be able to win the Battle of Midway very easily. And when we do go over the world missions, I again, similar to the previous event, We'll only be using tech tree ships for those who do not have any diamond, free XP, event, or prism ships. So I can show you how to do it with just tech tree ships and not the overpowered ships that you can just buy. Because if I were to just use Illinois, I could literally clear all 60 missions with just this one ship. Or pretty close to it. I know I can beat at least 12. So with that, I will now finish up today's video. Again, if you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And join me tomorrow for our review on Robin. And take care.